Hello, dear friends. Here we are. Twelve encounters with the divine friend. Yes, and this is day or night eight. Yes, this is the holy week where many people around the world are recollecting the last days of the divine friend on the earth. As an incarnated Jesus Christ, He is our divine friend. And through each and every encounter, thanks to the Spiritist teachings, we have come to know of nonverbal lessons that are really unprecedented. And we rejoice at each and every time that we discover them because every day or every night we're giving ourselves, our brains, an opportunity to reshape itself to transform, to learn the new. After all, as Emmanuel says in the book Living Spring, we're born to learn and to help. But as we were discussing tonight at the Spirit Side of Virginia, to help is not a given. We need to learn how to help. Because like Peter, he is also learning to help and the Master never misses an opportunity to come and teach us how to be more helpful. Sometimes we think we're being truly helpful, but we're rude, rough, and Peter was no different. And we're learning how to be more helpful. You wanna join us? You do? Yes, just come to kardecradio.com or to the app or to our Facebook page and later on our YouTube face page as well okay so this chapter we're gonna discuss is chapter 38 from the book contos e apologos chapter 38 from the book contos e apologos it's about a caridade da compaixão and a esmola da compaixão the alms of compassion. I think this lesson really comes very handy in these days when everybody feels that they are at the point of breakdown, helping and doing things and not knowing how to proceed. And the Divine Friend meets us tonight or today, depending on where you are, on the earth joining us and gives us a new perspective shall we let me say hi to our wonderful community who has been very um, active in this participation because i know that each one of you in your own end you are spreading the news of these messages so people can feel can feel closer to the master is it possible yes it is i'm just double checking cardiac radio system here so everyone has a chance to hear us right here we are hello dear leah how are you yes doing well thank you for your help leah and here we have Rihanna. How is everything there in South Africa, Rihanna? Are things calmer? Forgive my ignorance, but we would love to know if everything is calmer there, hopefully. But, you know, the world is really shaking up. Right, sunshine? How are you, my friend? How is everything there? Rosaline Rosa, thank you for joining us. And so, how are you? Sunshine, thank you for the flowers. Adilson, how are you, Adilson? It's good to be here, right? Patricia, beautiful garden. Dear Jussara, how are you, Jussara? Friends, today, Josara shared with us that today 
um, the Spiritist Group of New York is celebrating 16 years. It's a victory of the good on the earth. Spiritist centers are never trivial. They are hard work. The behind the scenes of Spiritist centers are intense. So we celebrate with you, with João, with uh, Elmo, and I remember Antonio, and many others, Jussara, with you who have been doing this wonderful work, sustaining the light in the core, in the core of Manha Manhattan. Thank you for sharing this with us, Jussara, and renewed strength and joy for all of you at SGNY. Wow! Hello, Wow! It's good to have you here, too. Andrea, how are you, Andrea? Beautiful flowers, a garden of flowers. Solange, how are you? Rudy, <laughs> great to be here, right? And Ilda, loved your picture, and Ilda, I felt you so close seeing your picture on Facebook. Leia, thank you for the beautiful hearts and everything else. Angelita, how are you, Angelita? Margaret, how are you? Friends, I know, for those who are watching us on demand, please forgive us because we are not saying your name. I know you may not mind it, but we just want to share with you that we want to interact with everyone. Of course, if we had like a thousand people, we wouldn't have time for it. But we're cherishing this intercontinental family feeling that I know is spreading out. You know, recently we got the statistics about Kardec Radio, and only in the last year, we had listeners in more than 99 countries around the world. We know that things are growing and expanding and expanding and help is all that we need because there's so much to be done and the harvest is immense, immense. And more than ever, people need messages that nourish their soul and redirect their thoughts to the positive. If you're feeling any sort of fear nowadays due to the news, remember, faith always. Let us recall that we are here to help those who need more help. Shall we read this? I think this message is perfect fitting. Thank you, Carol and Mark, for your loving hearts on double checking our app. And about to start reading, Rita de Cássia comes in. Thank you, Rita. Chapter 38 from the book Contos e Apologos by the spirit author Brother X or Humberto de Campos through the medium Chico Xavier. The Alms of Compassion, which tells us the key to compassion. Let us visualize it, huh? Thank you, Angelita, your friend in Nepal. That's wonderful. Beautiful that you're sharing this with your friend, right? With open doors to the service of charity, the house of the apostles, the house of the way, in Jerusalem was always full, but also loud in tumult. There were disillusioned patients who came to beg for hope. Elderly people without consolation who begged for shelter. Women who lived countenance carried crippled children in their arms that the hard globe of suffering mutilated at birth. From time to time, groups of generous Breathing, brethren arrived from everywhere, accompanying mentally alienated men so they could receive the benefit of prayer. Can you visualize it? Can we visualize it? Portray. It's an outpost. It's like a hospital. It's intense. And
and in a small room, Simon Peter devotedly attended to people. However, maybe because of his physical exhaustion or disillusionment with the hypocrisy of the world, the old fisherman showed irritation and fatigue, which were expressed in his exclamations of bitterness that he could no longer contain. <clears throat> so let me just share here. Friends are reminding me that I didn't share with them. Right, Rita Dicasia? And not that you're asking, I'm just saying we all need help, right, Rita? Me too. So Breathe in and out. Practice breathing while I am sharing this with other friends. Breathing in. I feel love. Breathing out. I feel joy of living. Breathing in. Breathing out. I feel like the sea that comes and goes and makes me feel the joy of living. No matter what we're going through, we know that everything shall pass sooner or later and that God never abandons us, right? Back to Peter. Peter was tired. He was helping people, but he is disillusioned. Do you feel like that sometimes? Do you feel that physical exhaustion like you're helping, helping, helping? Oh, and the hypocrisy of the world. And how do you feel? And then you still need to help. What do you do? Look at Peter used to do. Do you see that man? Peter shouted to Zenon, the humble companion who lent him assistance. Do you see that man who comes there with his dry and extended arms? That is Rehoboam, the wretch who beat his own mother on a night of drunkenness. Is it fair that he suffers the consequences now? This is Peter. And Peter then asked the sick person not to take much of his attention. Right after, pointing to a wounded woman who was searching for him, Peter exclaimed angrily, What are you looking for, wretched? You have enjoyed pride and cruelty for many years. I, I have often heard your filthy laughter before the dying slaves you beat to death. Get out of here! Get out of here! Peter, Simon Peter, saying this. And allowing the resentment to overflow, Peter then called out, an old paralytic who begged for help. Aren't you ashamed to be present at the Lord's landing when you have always devoured the livelihood of widows and orphans? Your coffers overflow with curses and tears. The whipping of the victim victims is the shackle of your feet. It's funny because when we're reading this, it's so easy for us to interpret the madness, the anger, right? <laughs> because that's common to us. But when we have to imitate Jesus' serenity, it's much harder. Have you observed it? But that's interesting. We, and Peter even comes with an accent. Accent. We're just kidding, just to make it a little lighter. And for many hours, Peter attacked the misfortune of others, exposing their deficiencies and mistakes of those who supplicated him for comfort. But when the sun was far gone, the twilight mist had invaded the bland refuge. A modest traveler entered the narrow cenacle, 
displaying wide bloody stain in his hands. In the chamber now, empty, only the old fisherman wanted to retreat, though sweating and despondent. The newcomer quietly approached, very subtly, and he touched Peter sweetly. But the troubled disciple of the gospel paid attention to this newcomer, claiming, however, impulsively, Who are you that arrive at this hour when the day's work is done? And because the stranger did not respond, Peter insisted with an inflection of censure. Answer to me without delay. Tell me quickly what you need. At that moment, however, Peter stopped to contemplate the roses of blood unbuttoning on those fine and beautiful hands. Peter stared at the bare feet that showed still vividly the red signs of the nails from the cross. Peter anxiously found in the strange pilgrim the look that reflected the glow of the stars. Perplexed and disheartened, Peter realized that he was standing before the Master. Kneeling down in tears, Peter groaned in sorrow, Lord, Lord, what do you want from your servant? It was then that the relieved Jesus caressed Peter's tormented head and spoke in a sad voice, Peter, remember that we're not called to assist pure souls. I come to implore you the charity of silence when you cannot help. And I beseech your alms of compassion for the children of my hope. The rough but loving fisherman of Capernaum plunged his face into the callous hands to wipe away the mournful and sincere tears. But when he raised his eyes again to embrace the beloved visitor, in the isolated chamber, there was only the shadow of the night advancing slowly. Thank you, Humberto de Campos, for the treasure of every day, for the treasure of this message. What a treasure. Practical lessons. Are you astonished? Yes. Yes. We are very, very happily surprised. In Jesus, our beautiful guide and model, personal trainer of the soul, we're tonight learning more about silence when we cannot help but true compassion when we help the humility of jesus is perplexing think about this if you are a teacher or a father or a mother you see your child doing a mistake making a mistake right and you see them doing a mistake and the impulse is to go there and shout on there like ah jesus is not like this he's teaching us he comes quietly subtly he sweetly touched peter 
to call his attention. When he speaks, he doesn't rush to answer. Why? Because he's truly empathetic. He knows what Peter is going on, but he needs to educate Peter. So how does he do it? He caresses the tormented head. How often do you do this with your child? With the people in your life? But Vanessa, in the United States, we cannot touch. Uh, you're not touching for any sexual purpose. It's about time that we've changed the game. People have to have the courage to change it all. Change it. Yes, we need to change. And Peter was caressed on his tormented head, but Jesus expressed his sadness for Peter. He taught him, but he left. What an educator. He says, I love you, I'm present, but do your lesson. He doesn't take anybody and hold like a babysitter, like a mom, like a paternal figure. No, 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 no. He is the light of the truth, which contains love and justice. Charity. Right? Do you identify yourself easily with Peter? You don't need to answer to us, but let us think about ourselves. I do. I do. Yes, how often we are indignated with hypocrisy. How often we're tired, right? How often? Thank you, Rudy and Rita. I'll share the words with Carlos, okay? We're very thankful to him, okay? And how often do you identify yourself with Peter? When you're tired, it's past your limit. I remember Divaldo Franco saying that he learned about his limit one day when he was younger. He was like in line talking to people. He, he was not in line. He was waiting for the line people after the talk, talking to him. And there was a moment he was becoming a little irritated. So Joana de Angelis advised him, Pay attention, my dear one, your limit. So he learned. And I'll never forget when I used to see Divaldo, and there were moments in which he was like, Now I need to go. He respected his limit. So he wouldn't go beyond his limit and wouldn't cross also people's limits, right? This is true love for the self and for others. Is it too hard for you to say, I can't, not now, this is my limit. Sometimes people wanna talk to you, etc. but you can't at that time. Oh, what are they gonna think? I prefer that they feel anything that they be treated badly by me. Hmm? How often we do this? And it's even worse. So we need to learn. We need to learn the limits. Today we learned the key to compassion. Where is the key to compassion? First, silence if we cannot help. Cannot help. Some people say, what can I do to prevent our third world war? Practice silence. If you don't know what to do, practice silence. Don't talk about it. Practice silence. But Vanessa, if you don't know how to help, practice silence. Jesus is telling us. But look at the President of the United States. Look at the President of Russia. 
Look at the president of Brazil. Look. You don't know how to help. I don't know how to help. I don't say anything. I don't post anything. Otherwise, nowadays, any one of us have enough social influence to go there and add to the pile of either peace or war. Why? Because peace in the world begins with me. Right? When I feel love, I know I'm truly happy. When I do good to my brother, la di da di da la da di da di da da just go to peaceinyou.net it's about the peace and you movement in the united states with Devaldo franco by the way he's around the united states i know yesterday he was in our beautiful california the beautiful sunshine was there right mm -hmm. yes so he's around the block and welcome welcome almost 90 years of age and the other key to compassion what is it the jesus is so 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 humble that he doesn't come to demand on peter peter you have to do this that and the other he says peter I come to beg you to do the charity of silence when you cannot help. He's saying, Vanessa, in a very Italian way, Jesus is saying, Vanessa, mamma mia, Vanessa, Cristina, Zillian, Celone, <laughs> I beg you, when you cannot help, can you keep quiet, please? <laughs> yes, sir. And he says, I beseech your alms of compassion for the children of my hope. Compassion is to give people time to heal, time to calm down. They need their time. After all, Jesus just wants us to do what? He wants us to help he doesn't want us to save the world Oof! thank god i don't need to be super anything he doesn't want us to solve the problems of the world Oof! thank god because i don't know how to solve the problems he just wants us to help and help is about listening being silent prayerful hopeful you know, a good, a good exercise mentor Joseph taught me the other day. He was like, Vanessa, this practice of external silence comes with inner affirmations. When you close your eyes, feel free to close your eyes if you're not driving. Feel and tell yourself, I am a child of God. I love myself. And I radiate from my heart this love of God to everyone here connected with me. And repeat this as much as you can with your open eyes. Visualize. And we're going to counterbalance. <laughs> Thank you, Rita. Thank you, Carol Correa. Mm-hmm. You feel it? Breathe in and out. Maybe you are at a business meeting and it's boring or tiring or this or that. Say, I am a child of God. Don't say out loud, otherwise people are like, what? Unless they want you to sing and then you sing away, but I am a child of God. I am a child of God. I reincarnated to learn to do good. And the good is to send in love. It doesn't come from me. It comes through me, not from me. Through me. But Vanessa, I don't have this love. You do. Open the door. 
Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine. I'm gonna let it shine, let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. This little light of God. I'm gonna let it shine. Did you feel Jesus? He's subtle, he's gentle, firm, caring, embracing, sweet. But he's not paternalistic. He doesn't do your homework. He doesn't do my homework, no matter how much we cry. Peter was crying, and he went his way. You see that balance? The divine friend. You're happier today? Happier now? Hello, Annie Mercia. How do you feel? The key to compassion? Did you get the key? Got it? Open. Open the door. Let us practice in the next 24 hours. This silence when we cannot help. But when we can, let us just be compassionate. Be compassionate by externalizing this love that comes through us from God to everyone who are the children of hope in Jesus' hearts. Shall we, friends? We wish you a beautiful night, if that's your case, or a beautiful day, if that's your case. And let's be together. Don't forget, April 18th, National Day of Spiritism in the United States and in the world, actually. And our dear Josara Korngold, Kardec Radio, the United States Spiritist Federation, awaits your collaboration. Record your message. Record your prayer. Share with us, kardecradio at gmail.com. And we'll be happy to play your message. Join us. That's how you can help the world. <laughs>